Someone over here. I heard that. On my way. I'm in for some chocolate. <laughs> Not your lucky day. Hello and welcome to Rock Paper Shotgun, where I've spent the last week hiding in bushes and aggressively whistling at strange men. It's the kind of behaviour that got me banned from my local park, but in Desperados 3, it's encouraged. In fact, if I've learned anything from this game, it's that you can be as naughty as you like in public spaces, as long as you're rich enough to throw away a small fortune in diversionary coins. Desperados 3 is a real-time stealth tactic game from the makers of Shadow Tactics. It harks back to a simpler time when towns were isometric and every bad guy had one of those big green triangle quality streets wedged into their eyes. Your job is to sneak heroes around those sight cones to pull off classic cowboy stuff, dropping bells on bandits, blowing up massive bridges, escaping a loveless marriage? Hmm, I don't remember that in the Dollars Trilogy. Maybe the words real-time tactics brings to mind strategy games and maybe that's a turn-off for you. So ignore them and focus on the stealth bit. Now I love a good stealth game for the same reason I love a good heist film or the Mission Impossible movies. I love skillful characters entering a space full of chaos and taking control of it with wit and a calm head. Desperados 3 is all about that, and that's why it's one of the best stealth games I've played in recent years. I know a claim like that is as bold as a vial of perfume to the face, but I'll hopefully justify it in this video. And if you enjoy the video, please do subscribe. Your continued support means I'll one day be able to pay off my fines for hiding in the bushes and aggressively whistling at strange men. Now, onwards. <laughs> I can do this all day. To look at it, Desperados 3 resembles Westworld meets Where's Wally, a series of beautiful Wild West dioramas full of loving details and very unloving enemy eyes. But the puzzle it more closely resembles is a murder sudoku. Each screen gives you a few hard facts, the enemy positions, and asks you to use that information to deduce your point of attack. Freeing these prisoners means getting rid of these eyes, which are in turn watched by these eyes, who are being watched by those eyes. Now those eyes are under a loose sign, but getting up there to drop it means getting round all the eyes here. Now Desperados 3 obviously has a lot more moving parts than Sudoku, and Sudoku grids don't tend to be patrolled by terrifying dogs, I mean your man wouldn't do them if they were. But it gives me the same sense of satisfaction as doing one of those brain teasers. You plonk yourself down, drink in the conundrum, and work out exactly where to stick the spanner in the clockwork structure before you. Back in the swamp, for example, a coin toss diverts these eyes, giving our sniper, Doc McCoy, a window of opportunity to shoot this guard. But now there's a body about to be found by this patrolling guard, so you need a nearby team member to swipe the corpse and drop it out of sight. Of course, even best laid plans can go wrong. The patrol sees your muddy footprints, for example, and comes to investigate. But rather than reach for the quick load, although I did do that a lot, there's lots of fun trying to make the most of these opportunities, like feeding this ultra-tough longcoat character a bullet and then a blade, removing him from play. Ironically, for a real-time tactics game, it's actually a pause that makes so much of this possible. At any moment, you can freeze the action and enter showdown mode, where you program in moves to trigger with a key press. It lets you do simple things like knock out two guards simultaneously, or take out three gunmen who would otherwise trigger one another. And then this guy who comes to investigate, and then his friend, and his other friend, and okay, this was a bit of a massacre, apologies. But it also allows more complex moves, like throwing multiple distractions in different directions to create a huge space for another character to get naughty. 
You could queue up moves like this in the original Desperados, and Me 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 really polished the feature in Shadow Tactics, but their time continued as you planned, so it still required quick reflexes to pull off complicated combos. Freezing time removes frantic hotkey work on the keyboard, or the even more manic button presses on a controller, and lets you pull off pixel perfect moves. It also adds quality of life features not in Shadow Tactics, like letting you plot a kill and then hide a body as one action, instead of leaving you standing there next to a corpse. There's also a fast forward button, which is a godsend when waiting for patrols to hit their desired cues. Rather than dumb the game down, I think these changes enable you to think more inventively. If you can envisage a plan, you can probably execute it. Okay then. All this experimentation only works because the game is so open about its rules. A lot of stealth games aren't, they trade on slight vagaries in their systems to create tension, that sense of will they won't they that keeps you on your toes. Here nothing is left to chance, dotted circles show an ability's reach, blue circles reveal how audible those moves are, red and green lines show valid lines of attack, and markers can be placed to show every pair of eyes looking at any given point. I'm glad we don't have these dotted lines in real life incidentally, as it would reveal to my wife how often I'm thinking about Toblerone while she's telling me off for not exercising. More importantly you have sweeping view cones, which are made up of the solid green bit where you'll always be seen, and a shaded pocket created by cover, where you can crouch or hide bodies undetected. The two-tone view cone, which is very fun to say, was introduced in Shadow Tactics and continues to be one of Mimi Me's best contributions to this particular genre. It creates lots of fun moments where you dart between cover as the cone shifts this way or that, and it brings interesting challenges in nighttime levels, where everyone's range is naturally limited, but torches and bonfires like light up tricky bubbles of perfect vision. Of course, pick up a torch and you can start drawing attention to your own lures, bringing a whole new level of traps to proceedings. The interface is also what makes guns work in Desperados 3, which are a vital part of westerns, but are also a big lump of anti-stealth sitting in your hand. Here guns are very noisy, which means alarm bells in most areas, which means a little trip to our old friend, the F8 key. But if you can get some distance or remove any ears in the blue circle, they provide long range murders to weave into your stealth plans. Reaching the deserts of Mexico and finally having the space to mess around with Cooper's dual pistols was a really fun moment. Also shout out to Doc McCoy whose long range sniper rifle paired with a tiny audible window gives him incredible power to rain down death and unlike Shadow Tactics sniper Takuma, he's more physically capable so it can be used way more aggressively than his Shogun counterpart. It ain't personal. Something feels really off. Sorry. I mention Shadow Tactics as there's no doubt that it looms large over Desperados 3 or lurks under it is probably more fitting. The play of light and shadow in the nighttime levels, the introduction of surfaces that make more noise, the way guards can follow footprints in the mud. Experienced ninjas will feel very comfortable with these and be able to lean on some old tricks. But there's definitely a greater sense of ambition in Mimi Me's new level designs. Part of it is down to a bigger focus on story. There are a few stages where you get to explore non-hostile environments which could be lifted from a Hitman game. As you mingle with civilians and try to slink into areas that are out of bounds or listen for NPC clues to get an idea of what to do next. But even outside of these, there's a sense of our heroes getting into unusual scrapes. There's a brilliant level where you try to put the band back together after a really messy night out. It's basically the hangover directed by Sergio Leone. And a level featuring a speeding train is an all-time stealth classic, as you use the bulk of the train to mask your naughty deeds on either side of the track, or use it to wipe out goons with accidental kills. 
But beyond these high-concept showcases, there's a general sense of scale and escalation that feels very true to the Western. Whether or not it's intentional, there's often a structure to levels that see smaller pairings dumped on either side of the map, then meeting up in the middle, creating this sudden explosion of strategies when all those abilities finally get back together. It's quite rare that you have all five heroes together at the same time, and those moments feel suitably empowering when they occur. The final mission, which I won't spoil here, is a killer test of everything you've learned and ties up the story in a way that's both mechanically and narratively satisfying. It's beautifully done. Sure thing. Let's make it quick. Who needs a good... Someone's about to lose a few teeth. Just as the levels build on what came before, so do the heroes. At first glance, some could be descendants of Shadow Tactics' gang. Cooper's throwing knife and coin toss feel like Hayato's shuriken and stone toss, and Kate's disguise and perfume bottle handle a lot like Aiko's moves, although with an added ability to lead lovesick suitors into horrible traps. But Hector and Doc are quirkier hybrids, and newcomer Isabel is a bonkers burst of possibilities who can mind control enemies and tie their fates together. It's like Emily from Dishonored 2 escaped into this game. I've seen some people question the tone of bringing actual magic into Desperados, but it's a cartoon cowboy world, so eh. And also, she gave me some of the game's biggest eureka moments, which I'm not going to spoil here. What I love about this cast, and the same goes for Shadow Tactics, is that on paper there's a lot of crossover between skills. A coin distraction and a blinding perfume toss both achieve roughly the same thing. But as the game goes on and situations intensify, you begin to appreciate each subtle difference, right down to which characters can carry a body standing and which drag them along the ground. It really does matter. And because the game dictates which characters are used in which mission, it's constantly cooking up new mixes, teasing out the interplay between new ability sets in really interesting ways. All this means getting through Desperados 3 once was a pleasure. It took me just under 35 hours on hard difficulty. That's my personal sweet spot, as it adds a few more guards and gives them quicker reactions, which push your grasp of the systems that little bit harder. But it also means showdown mode still freezes time, which doesn't on the highest Desperado setting. If you want to go like a granular Goldilocks and tweak the murder porridge until it's just right, you can also do that. That. This really is how difficulty should be handled. I say 35 hours, but that's only really the beginning of your relationship with Desperados 3. Each level has 8 hidden objectives that reveal themselves at the end. Not only do they extend the game, they force you to engage in ways you might not have before. How do you assassinate this building foreman when you can't lay a finger on any guard in the building site? Hint, not like this. Can you clear out the banks of the Mississippi without swimming in the Mississippi itself? A task harder than spelling Mississippi. When other objectives ban Kate's disguises or melee takedowns or hiding in bushes, it's almost like you're playing a new level. And don't get me started on the time trials. Some of these stages took me a couple of hours to beat, only to get to the end and see a badge for doing it in 15 minutes. A tiny part of me is sad that I will probably never be able to tick these speedrunning tasks Tasks off, but I know plenty of fiends who will absolutely relish in them. It is so rare to see a game explore its own ideas in this kind of depth, to have such confidence in its mechanical nuances to tease players towards them. Most games don't because they don't have the brains to back up the breadth, but Desperados 3 does. And that's before it goes and introduces another layer on that, with the Baron's challenges that remix five existing maps with all new missions. You'll tackle missions with different characters, take on a detective task, even attempt a series of assassinations with all your weapons removed. Amazingly, my accompanying review notes say the team intend to add more of these level twists post-release, ideally one for each map. I really hope they do, as they are a real treat outside of the main story. I guess the short version is this. If you like what Desperados 3 does, there is so much Desperados 3 for you to enjoy. 
I really love Mimi Me's clear devotion to the genre. To be honest, I think they've elevated it way above what it ever was. As much as I liked Commandos and Desperados 1, this is a much better version of that. It takes the core idea of colourful characters coordinating in a hostile world and makes it sing. I haven't even gone into how much I love the art design, the music. Hopefully it's clear from this video that this is going to take you on a tour of some beautiful Wild West hotspots. Full disclosure, I am a nut for westerns, I'd prefer a visit to Westworld to Shogun World for example, but even without that affinity, this is an exciting colourful universe to spend a week or two. Honestly, with the chaos of everything at the moment, Desperados 3 has been a great chance to apply a bit of order to a wicked world, albeit one bush assassination at a time. I hope you've enjoyed this Desperados 3 review. If you have any questions, do pop them in the comments. I'd love it if you checked out some of our other recent reviews. They should be on the left now. And do hit the big subscribe button. It doesn't matter if you're good, bad or ugly. We'd love to have you back. Thanks for watching, and we'll hopefully see you again soon. Bye for now.